Latest development on Brexit and the European Union and the UK, it seems, have agreed on a draft agreement uh, deal uh, on their future relationship, paving the way for a Brexit deal to be finalized this weekend, possibly itself. The European Union and that uh, f said that a future relationship deal had been agreed upon in principle, but the agreement is subject to the leader's endorsement here. Of course, this means Theresa May, his cabinet, uh, her cabinet, as well as Parliament. Theresa May will make a statement to uh, members of parliament later on tonight. Downing Street said the Prime Minister was currently briefing cabinet ministers on the draft agreement in a conference call. Last week, the UK and the European Union agreed to a 585-page legally binding withdrawal agreement covering the UK's 39 billion divorce bill, citizens' rights after Brexit and the thorny issue of the Northern Ireland backstop uh, was also discussed, how to keep the border open if trade talks stall. Now, Britain is due to leave the European Union in March next year. Diplomats from both sides are trying to put the finishing touches to the separation deal so that the European Union leaders can rubber stamp them at a summit on Sunday. The, run, the transition period, which Britain and the European Union hope will begin once Britain leaves the European Union on March 29, can be extended for up to one or two years, according to the draft declaration as well. And Kevin Ospik uh, is now joining us from Brussels for the very latest on this deal in principle that has been agreed by both sides. And Kevin, now the political declaration uh, is a separate thing. Now, this, of course, is, is far shorter, a document from the legally binding withdrawal deal, it seems. And the worry is that it, it, the wording here is non-committal, uh, uh, is what we're picking up. Yeah, some MPs back in the UK on the other side of the channel really have an issue with that. So you went over that there's this 585, essentially it's a divorce deal. That's already been done and dusted. That was all agreed to last week. Uh, the issue right now is just this 26-page uh, political declaration. It's not legally binding, but it's politically binding. And there's still some issues surrounding it even though negotiators on both sides gave it the green light this morning. So what's happening right now is it's in the hands of ambassadors from the 27 EU states. They're sharing it with their national capitals. They're getting feedback from their national capitals. And they'll all meet tomorrow and either give it the green light or put a red light up, and this will all have to be, go back to negotiators. But uh, the thinking is that it's, if it's already past the negotiating pay stage, uh, it is pretty likely that what's known as the Sherpas, they're the uh, representatives from the national capitals here in the EU, will give it the green light. If that happens, then it looks like Sunday's special summit will go ahead as planned. That's really being viewed as just a rubber stamp summit, mostly because the German Chancellor Angela Merkel has made it very clear that she will not come to Brussels Sunday morning to do any talking, to do any negotiating. She's simply coming to sign off on what she wants to be an already pre-agreed to political declaration. So this agreement this morning, one step there, not a done deal just yet, though. Right, one step there, but not a done deal. And certainly we, we believe that Theresa May is meeting her cabinet, uh, at least uh, at this moment, we believe. And also, of course, we'll be talking to parliamentarians later tonight, uh, Indian Standard Time, and hoping that this political declaration uh, can be the consensus maker in the UK. Uh, so uh, can you give us more details of that? Yeah, when you go through the 26 pages, it's very clear that Theresa May and the UK negotiators are trying to please as many people as possible. It says that the trading relationship, the trading of goods uh, between the two sides should be as close as possible. Now, that could irk off some Brexiteers because they could read that and say, well, hey, that looks like there's still going to be some strings attached to the EU single market. Uh, but there's also a line in there that makes it very clear that the UK will be uh, free and OK to uh, negotiate its own bespoke trade deals with its allies and partners around the world. It's not lost on any of the policymakers and the politicians here in Brussels that the months of hard work, the months of back and forth, the really tough negotiations that have been taking place could all go to waste if the House of Commons, which we think will vote on this next month, turns this all down. 
uh, we know from watching these uh, Brexit talks that here on the EU side, the EU, up until recently with this little uh, issue that Spain has brought up over the status of Gibraltar, has been pretty unified. The political chaos has all been on the UK side. And really that still is not changing because it's going to be crucial that the House of Commons approves this both uh, political declaration as well as the mm -hmm. divorce deal. And that's where this could all fall apart. That's true. In fact, it is, of course, all boiling down to what happens inside the British Parliament. The backstop agreement is something that uh, the opposition party, uh, as well as those within May's cabinet, have not agreed to. Uh, but there's some recovery, Kevin, today as far as the good news is concerned. The pound has recovered, and this is possibly the only good news that Theresa May has got uh, since Dominic Raab resigned as the Brexit secretary. Right, and take a look at the pol political dynamic on the UK side. You have some MPs who may want to vote down this deal simply because they want to give a political headache, headache to Theresa May and they want to increase the chances of there being a second referendum. On the opposite side of the political spectrum, you have those hardcore Brexiteers who could look at this deal and say, hey, this really gives Brussels too much of a reach still here in the UK. The reason we voted to leave the bloc, the reason we voted to leave the EU is we don't want any more interference from Brussels. We, w we don't want to have to listen to any rules and regulations that were decided here and not Westminster. So it's a tough sell. But we're already seeing Theresa May make that sell. Before she arrived here in Brussels last night for a late night chat with European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker, she addressed the parliament back home and she essentially said to those MPs who want a second referendum or who are on the Labour side that, hey, if you don't back my plan, it's possible that maybe we could have a no deal Brexit and if you and you've been saying that that's the worst case scenario and to those right. Brexiteers she's saying well hey if you don't back my plan if you don't back my deal well hey maybe we'll stay in the EU so she's making the sell and she's making it hard right Kevin Osbeck thanks very much indeed for joining us with the latest from Brussels on that political declaration uh, that has been agreed upon as of now but the bigger issue is whether it will pass the muster in the British Parliament or not.